my friends, we'll be off to new adventures, you will see. Off to the center of the earth or the bottom of the sea, so come with me. To the center of the earth, where life has started first, so many things for us to learn. Solve the major mysteries that lie so deep within our precious world. So many leaves just to find the proof we need. And the center of the earth, the center of the earth. Travel is what we like to do. Our adventures old and new, they keep us so long. Why don't you help us set our sails? We'll discover many trails, so come along. We got Don and Tico too. With Ruby and new friends for you. Join me along with all my friends on a trip that never ends to many places old and new. To the center of the earth, where life is starting first. So many things for us to learn Solve the major mysteries That lie so deep within our precious world Episode 15, Old Friends. Attacks on shipping by a mysterious sea monster were brought to the attention of Monsieur Willie Fogg. The American government had asked Monsieur Fogg to join an expedition aboard the naval vessel Abraham Lincoln to help solve the maritime mystery. Oh, mon dieu, we had only just returned from the center of the earth and now we were all going on another adventure to hunt down a sea monster in the depths of the ocean. The date is the 28th of August, 1873, and we have set off on yet another exciting expedition. We are sailing across the ocean to America. Monsieur Fogg is determined to find the solution to the mystery that has all the leading scientists in the world completely baffled. Meanwhile, Tico and I are trying to relax on the deck of this luxurious liner. You cheat, Regadon! You rotten cheat! How could you do that to your best friend? No, no, mon ami. It is not I who is cheating. It is you who is a bad loser. You are cheating. I saw you move in my puck. Well, you did. That is all nonsense, mon ami. But I will forgive you for insulting me because it is my go and I am about to win. Hey, no fair. You move it with your foot. <coughs> hey, no, no, it's a no fair. Rigging on you big cheat. Well, I'm not going to play with you anymore. So there. You can play by yourself. Rigadon, Tico, whatever is the matter, you've done nothing but argue and bicker over that game since we left London. I don't know what all the fuss is about. He's a Rigadon, he's a bigger cheat. Tico is a bad loser, Princess. What? How could I be a bad loser when I never lose? Tell me, huh? You still have an artistic temperament, I see, Tico. It's a Keeter! Look, my friend, it's a Keeter, he's come to see us. Rigadon, look, a Keeter's here! Well, what? Akita is here? What is it? Why, good heavens, it's Akita, the circus owner that we met in Yokohama when we were on our trip around the world in 80 days. It's nice to see you, Akita. How are you? Madam, allow me to introduce you to my fiance, Marlena. I'm delighted to meet you, princess. Hey, she's wearing an awful lot of perfume, princess. Don't you think so? Well, Regadon, and how's the world been treating you since you left the old circus behind and went on your travels? Oh, I have been very busy, monsieur. I bet there was nothing you could compare to the excitement you felt when you were still with the circus. Do you remember that, Regadon? The Human Cannonball Act, with Tico as the cannonball, was a great success. The evening that Mr. Willie Fogg was in the audience was a particularly memorable one. 
As Tico disappeared into the barrel, he had no idea that his performance that night would go down in circus history. As he flew through the air, Mr. Fogg showed remarkable skill with an umbrella that is still talked about today. The knife-throwing act with the great artist Zambini was spectacular too. Over 500 performances are not a scratch. <laughs> Do you remember that rigodon? Oh, yes, I remember those times very well. But compared with the hazards we faced on our last journey, the circus was a picnic, let me assure you. So now you're going to take a little holiday in New York, yes? Mon Dieu! No, no, but I wish we were. We're going there to catch an incredible creature that's over a hundred meters long and spits fire. Oh, Tico, that's ridiculous. You know you're exaggerating. Now stop showing off. Actually, we're going to New York because the American government has asked my husband, along with some scientists, to investigate some strange accidents that have happened at sea. Excuse me, Princess Romy. Where is Mr. Fogg right now? Yes, I should like to meet this illustrious gentleman. Any man who suffers such terrible hardships for the benefit of the human race must be fascinating. Yes, um, well, let me see now. Um... According to this book, Ralph, Professor Aranax knows an awful lot about sea monsters. Just take a look at this illustration. Looks just like a whale to me. Not quite. It's called a killer whale. And just look at the size of it, Ralph. It's enormous. My dear Mr. Fogg, how wonderful to see you after all this time. Well, well, my old friend Akita, I had absolutely no idea that you were travelling on this ship. It's good to see you again. I'm going over to New York to set up my new show. And now, Mr. Fogg, allow me to introduce you to my fiancée, Marlena. I am very pleased to meet you, miss. No, Mr. Fogg, the pleasure is all mine. I've heard so much about you, I've been simply dying to meet you. Oh, well, as you can see, I'm really quite the same as everybody else. People tend to exaggerate some things. But I was forgetting my manners. This is Ralph. He's a wonderful journalist and a very good friend of mine. Delighted. That's quite a picture you've got there, Ralph. I've never seen a monster as large as that before. Oh, it's not a monster, sir. No, this is a killer whale. Rigadon, are you sure it will work? Of course I'm sure. Listen, it will work. Okay, I agree. Excuse me, Princess, but there is something we would like to say to you. Yes, we have something very special to say to the most wonderful princess in the whole world. You have? Well, what is it? We wanted to say happy birthday. Happy birthday! Oh, thank you, thank you both so much. And I thought you'd all forgotten my birthday. No, no, Princess, and here's your present. Oh, it's lovely, thank you so much. Absolutely splendid. Oh! What is it, Princess? Is something wrong? No, nothing, thank you. It's a lovely present. Okay, that's all. You can go now. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, good morning, miss, and a good morning to you, Mr. Fogg. Uh, Mr. Fogg, won't you come in? Have you come up to see the dolphins with Miss Marlena? Mr. Fogg has just been telling me about killer whales, Captain. Do you think we'll see any of these frightening creatures? Uh, well, I don't think they're very common in this part of the world, but you never know. By the way, Captain, how long do you think it will be now before we catch sight of the American coast? We expect to sight America tomorrow morning, if all goes well. I'm giving a farewell dinner party this evening to mark the end of the voyage, and I was hoping that you would be my guests. I'd love to. I adore dinner parties. We'd be delighted. Cute. No? Come on! Help me to find something that will stick my hair down! Bring it on! Alas, mon brave, I'm afraid that will not work. We're just going to have to cut Yikes. it off. You crazy! The last time you were seasick, you got crazy too. I'm warning you, don't lay a finger on me. Oh, come on, Tico. You would think I was trying to cut your throat, not your air. Well, I wouldn't even trust you to cut my toenails. I know exactly what to do. Hey, just leave me alone. Look, I don't care if my hair sticks up. I wasn't talking about your air, Tico. I was thinking that after dinner, we could do some juggling like we used to do. Juggling? But Rigadon, we haven't juggled for ages. With all this traveling, we haven't had any time to practice either. Huh? 
<laughs> hey, be careful with that! That's my best cologne! What are you doing, Rigadon, you big fool? Good evening, my dear. Ah, good. I see that you are all ready for dinner. Yes, I am, but you're late, Willie. That's right. I am exactly three and a half minutes late, actually. Tell me, Willie, do you know what day it is today? Yes, of course I do. Today is the 3rd of September, and tomorrow we shall arrive in New York right on schedule. That's not what I mean. Today, Willie, today's my birthday. Your birthday? Yes, of course it is. I had completely forgotten about that. I'm terribly sorry, my dear. Looks as though it's going to be another quiet night. Huh? Ah! I must warn the captain! Ah! Captain! Captain! What is it? I have to see the captain right away! You can't! He's at his farewell dinner party! What's the matter? There's an iceberg dead ahead of us and we're going to crash into it! Are you quite sure? Very sure. Let's see. You're right. We're going to hit it. Cheers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I should just like to propose a toast to all the passengers on what has been a very pleasant trip. And now we have a little surprise for a very special lady. Happy oh. birthday, my dear. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this wonderful cake is really for me. Absolutely, and so is this. Oh. 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 What a beautiful ring. I hope that you enjoy the cake that I made for your birthday. Your husband ordered it just for you. Mm. Oh, phew, that's what it was. Huh? That's the alarm! And, and it, it sounds, sounds like, like it's, it's for real. real! Maybe it's a killer veil. Oh, mon dieu! Typical, just as I was about to get some cake! I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, ladies and gentlemen, so please remain in your seats. Mr. Fogg, yes. perhaps you would care to accompany me. Yes, Captain. Right away. Huh? Wait for me! I'm coming too! A journalist should always be in the front line. So after the dick hen told me about it, I looked for myself and there it was, an enormous iceberg. And do you think the ship will crash into it? There's really no way of knowing and we can't change course now. Well, Mr. Fogg, it doesn't look too good, does it? I think we should definitely prepare ourselves for the worst, Captain. Look out! Right here, sir! Sound action stations and then man the lifeboats. Aye, aye, Captain! Now hear this! Now hear this! Red alert! Prepare the lifeboats for launch! Oh, this is terrible! We're gonna hit an iceberg! Oh dear, this really is terrifying. Aren't you at all scared, Princess? But I'm sure that if we stay calm, things will turn out for the best. You'll see. Oh, mon dieu, mon dieu! A huge iceberg! And I was scared of a little sea monster! Yeah, well, if you hear a rumbling noise, it won't be a sea monster, it'll be my stomach! Will you shut up about that cake, Tico? You'll drive me mad! Now, everyone, proceed to the lifeboats in a calm and orderly manner. There's no need to panic! What's the verdict, Captain? Bad news, I'm afraid. The crash is inevitable. Ah, oh, and to think I wanted to come up here, to the front! 
Calm down, gentlemen. I believe we still have a chance. Oh, 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 dear. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no, Rigadona, look. I don't think there's any room left for us. Don't be so selfish, Tico. What about Monsieur Fogg? He cannot possibly get to a lifeboat. He is at the front of the ship, risking his life with Ralph and the captain. Gentlemen, we made it. The iceberg only caught us a glancing blow. There's some superficial damage, but we're safe. Hey! We're saved! We're saved! I think that we should reassure the passengers immediately, Captain. I've already sent for the lookout, Mr. Fogg. You called, Captain? The emergency's over and we've sustained no damage. I wanted to reassure the passengers, then set up regular watches until we sight New York at dawn. Is that clear? I'll do it right away, Captain. And now, gentlemen, I suggest we go back to the dining room and enjoy what's left of the dinner party. Yes! A good idea. It's a very good idea. We could do with enjoying ourselves after such a close shave. Captain, the ship's coming into port. Should the orchestra start playing yet? No, not yet, Carlo. Wait until the ship's docked, right? Aye, aye, Captain. Hooray! Here they come! Hooray! Get ready, you guys. Sure thing, Bob. They'll be here any minute now. Well, my dear, we finally arrived in New York. And this is just the start. Hey, Rigadon, you see all those people down there? I've never seen so many people. What a welcome party. I have experienced this before. Monsieur Fogg is world famous, remember? Hooray! 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 OK, Carlo, give the order. Tell the orchestra to play when they're ready. Well, okay, buddy, you heard the captain. What are you waiting for? Is it true you're sailing on the Abraham Lincoln immediately, Mr. Fogg? And tell us about this monster, Mr. Fogg. You don't really think it exists, do you? I'm sorry, gentlemen. Mr. Fogg is very tired from his journey. He will answer all your questions at a later date. Thank you all very much. Hmm? Hmm. I've never been surrounded by so many people before. I wouldn't mind talking to the press, though, if they wanted me to. Welcome, Mr. Fogg. I'm the captain of the Abraham Lincoln. Good morning, Captain. I'm delighted to meet you, and I'm looking forward to an enjoyable trip with you and your crew. If you would follow me, please, Mr. Fogg. Of course. I can't wait to see the inside of the Abraham Lincoln. Marlena and I are staying in New York, so the time has come to say goodbye and to wish you luck. You have a long and dangerous journey ahead of you. I give you my best wishes for a speedy and safe return. I hope we meet again. I'm sure we will. And next time I will make you a cake that will make your mouth water. Though not perhaps on a ship this time. Well, goodbye, Akita. And I hope that your circus is a big success, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Fogg. OK, Rigadon, so what are we going to do? Go back to the circus or go looking for a sea monster? We shall follow Monsieur Fogg, of course. Wherever he goes, we go too. 
Good morning, Captain. My name is Ralph. I'm a journalist with the London Morning Chronicle. Could you find me a cabin on board your ship, the Abraham Lincoln? We can always find room for a world-famous journalist like yourself, sir. Just leave it to Carlo. He will take care of everything and make sure you are comfortable. Well, gentlemen, I hope that everything is satisfactory and that Carlo has taken good care of you. Everything is absolutely fine. Good. In that case, I shall be giving the order to sail in a half hour. Well, that means we'll soon be underway, Mr. Fogg. Captain, could you spare me a moment? Ah, Professor, allow me to make the formal introductions. That won't be necessary, Captain. It is an honour to be on the same ship as such an illustrious scientist, Professor Aranax. It's a much greater honour to be travelling with such an experienced adventurer as yourself, Mr. Fogg. You're too kind. Allow me to introduce you to Ralph Professor, a journalist from the prestigious Morning Chronicle. He will be with us on the trip. Pleased to meet you. By the way, do either of you know where I might find Carlo? I have lost my suitcase. He's showing my butler around the ship, but exactly where he is now, I've no idea. Now the engine room's in here. Wow, they need a whole room for the engine. Hey! Huh? What are you still doing here, Gus? The captain fired you this morning and he told you to get off this ship, so you'd better do just that. I don't care what the captain said, Carlo. I mean to go on this trip. If the captain says you're out, you're out. Now don't give me any trouble, Gus. I'm warning you. An order's an order now. Out, out, out. And are out. you gonna make me, Carlo? Go on, go ahead and try. Get ready, Rigadon. It's a look like this nasty piece of work's a spoiling for a fight. I think you're right, my friend. We should be there to lend Carlo an hand, so follow me. Hey, Carlo, you need some help? Yeah, Carlo, you want us to show this guy the jab and the uppercut and give him the old one too, huh? That won't be necessary, my friends. Gus was just leaving. Okay, okay, I'll leave. But you haven't heard the last of this, not by a long way. Man, I think he's got a bit of a nasty temper. Oh. Huh? Well, I wonder why he's in such a hurry. I'm gonna get my revenge on all of them. We leave New York far behind and sail on the Abraham Lincoln in search of a sea monster. Though we often find what we are not looking for, Life on the ocean waves is full of surprises. Then something takes an interest in our ship. It is strong and vicious. There is nothing we can do except wait for the attack. And when the attack comes, it is devastating. And just when we think things cannot get any worse, they do.